Okay, preliminary concepts. To recheck the units and limits, you just redo the commands. Just type in your UN enter, check them if they're good, just enter. LM, type it in, enter, check your lower left, enter. Just go through them and chances are you've just missed one of them. Uh, what do we click on the menu? W we've already covered the scroll bars and how to change the display but the answer is tools options. How do we zoom in and out? We've already covered that. How can we move around to a different area of the drawing? You can use this command right here, the pan, and just drag your page around. The other way that you can do that is just to press and hold the scroll wheel and that takes you in the pan command and just release it and the command will end. If you use the icon, you need to press the escape key to get out of it. How to make perfectly straight horizontal and vertical lines? Come down here to the status bar. The ortho command, when you go into the line command, it will constrain you to only horizontal and vertical lines. So that's one method. The other method is instead of using ortho, to use polar. And in polar, we have some settings. We can access them by right clicking, click settings, come in here. By default this number is 90 but we're gonna we change it to 45 and say OK and that means that when we draw a line we can lock in by moving the mouse uh, across to the right. We're locked into 0 right now. At this point we're locked into 45, 90, 135, 180, 225, 270, 315. Those are all the angles that we need for architectural drafting. Uh, the advantage of the polar is that in addition to strictly horizontal lines that we get the extra uh, angled lines as I showed you those ones. Okay, to draw a quick line just by eye, click on the line command click the screen at the beginning point and at the end point and then press enter. If you want to make a series of lines and close them you click at each point and when you're finished down here in the prompt in the command line it's telling you give me the next point or you can undo or close. Now undo is a good one to know if you press the U and enter it's going to undo the last segment. Undo again and it'll work backwards. The C command here, the close, you can see that it's a capital C there so that tells us all we have to type is the C. Press enter and that will close your series of lines. If uh, we want to uh, erase a line, first we select it, we can click the erase or we can just select it and press the delete key. What's a window box selection? A lot of times when you're new you click on the screen and you accidentally get into this selection command and uh, you don't want to be in it a lot of the time so you just press escape. But it does come in handy for selecting items. So right now you can see that I've clicked on my screen and now I'm dragging down and to the right and I'm going to click and this is called a window box selection. What makes it a window box is that purple color and the fact that we've come over to the right. And when I click what is going to be selected this time is only the red circle and the red line because the rule is that it has to be completely enclosed in order to be selected. So that black rectangle you see, it does, doesn't get selected. Uh, so at this point I'm just going to move them over a little bit. A crossing box selection is when you moved from right to left and it's green. And what it means is that anything at all that crosses into that box is going to get selected. So in this selection the red circle, the red line and the rectangle all get selected. There's another tool called, it's called OSNAP down here on the grid. It stands for Object Snap. 
I call this the running snap. If you right click just like the rest of those things on the on the status bar you get a settings option and when you come in here you can see that you have a whole number of, s of object snaps that we can utilize and right now the ones that are running are the ones with these checks on them so I have an endpoint snap running and you can see it shows you it's a square shape so I'll just show you how that works if I go to draw a line and I get close to any endpoint it's like a magnet it pulls your cursor over and snaps so that you're exactly on that endpoint uh, so that if we were to zoom in there will be no gap it's perfectly attached okay we can change the running snaps anytime we want to get the snaps that we need right now we have a center snap on so you can see when this line is connected exactly to the center of that circle here's another snap is the quadrant snap quadrant snap gives us four points at opposite ends of the circle there so a quadrant there's one two three four so they're very handy they're running all the time in the background uh, there's another snap toolbar that are, that you should have on is uh, one of the toolbars so come over to any icon and right click on it open up this toolbar here object snap you can drag it by the blue bar dock it over here and this one is for the occasion that you need another snap that's not running and any of these work only for one time so if I want to draw a line and I want it to snap to the midpoint of this line and you can see it's snapping to my endpoints but it's not snapping to the midpoint I come over to this bar and I click it and that says to the machine for this one go snap me to the midpoint so I can draw a line from there and you'll see it's still not on it's just good for one go you should have this turn on all the time it's really handy it's also handy for the odd time when you want to draw something and you don't want to snap I want to get pretty close to this line but you can see it it always snaps me over so I can actually come over here say snap to none and that way I'm not sure why I got that because I actually have an extension hmm. I'm not sure why I got that one I can draw something close to a snap point without snapping to it and that's it